So she's been in here for about two weeks. Look how aggressive she is with me. She just protects that shell so much. Beautiful fish, but look at her flaring those gills up, trying to make herself appear as large as possible. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be moving even more fish around the fish room to make way for another surprising spawn that I honestly didn't expect. Uh, I have hardly any tanks left, so I'm gonna to have to think of something. But let's get into this week's video and see what I end up doing. So these guys have spawned again. My white Altamo Pelotus calvus. You can see the female hiding almost in the shell. And the big male just above her. They've got fry in that shell. They're pretty much free swimming and I need to make room in the fish room once again. So if we pan up, you'll see all the fry that I've got in the top row of tanks. Uh, all these tanks hold calvus fry. These are black calvus. The other tanks all hold various ranges of age ranges of white outer and below this calvus fry. So heaps in there. Doesn't look like it at the moment, but uh, I've just turned the light on, so they're just getting used to it. Look at these guys all in the water column. Uh, we got some Leilupi and their two spawns. And this is more black Altolampologus calvus fry. So I need to make room for the new spawn uh, that from these guys, from my white Altolampologus calvus. So what I'm gonna actually do is move some of these fish out into other tanks, uh, mainly my Lamprologus oscillatus gold. These guys in here are gonna go in with them. And then uh, what I'll do is move my, these guys, these calvers, they're quite large, uh, out of this tank and pop them into this tank for now. So these guys will go in there with them and then the white calvus that are in here will go in here and then the fry, once they start coming out of the shell, I've seen one on the sand bed already uh, yesterday, so I'm expecting them to come out soon. But those fry, it'd be easy for me to just to catch them and pop them into this aquarium. Uh, I want uh, nice and close, just nice and close. I like not having to uh, move them too far down the fish room. So, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that I need to move these guys out of here to a aquarium that is a little bit far away, but uh, get it done in a span of about 10 minutes, I reckon. But first thing I need to do is get these guys out of here and pop them in there. So I've spilled water everywhere from the net and uh, we've moved some fish around. So, what do we got? Now we've got a free tank here. There's nothing in this except for bristlenose catfish. And uh, that's part of my cleaning crew to keep the glass pretty clean uh, off from the algae. So I'll probably need to add another one in there uh, so they can keep up with the algae growth in that aquarium. But the fish that were in here, we've got now the Lampelogus oscillatus gold. They're all in this aquarium together. And I also had some Ventralis tritica in with the Neo Lamp uh, in with the Lampelogus oscillatus gold up in here and I decided to put them into this tank. A larger tank for them, so uh, they've got more swimming space. These guys love to swim in open water. And I decided, why not put them in with the gold comps? The gold comps are very shy, always hang at the back of the tank there. Sorry for the reflections, guys. Very hard to uh, film in here with the lights on um, and not get any reflections, but you can see the, the fish at the back there. Uh, so the gold comps are very shy, and I, my thought, here was I put the Ventralis Tritica in with them and let's see other fish in the aquarium and the and the, the gold comps would see other fish in the aquarium uh, and that would hopefully make the gold comps feel a little bit more comfortable uh, and basically the Ventralis Tritica would act as the other fish in this aquarium now. You can see there's some activity uh, <laughs> with the gold comps uh, and that's the most activity I've seen in, in the last few weeks so that's really good to see. So I just want these gold comps to come out of their shell and uh, be, be less shy. They're always hanging at the back of the aquarium, always constantly feeding them at the back of the aquarium because they just won't eat if I just pop food in the front of the aquarium. Hopefully with the Ventralis Chaitika in here, the gold comps will feel a little bit more at ease and will come out a little more frequently. So you can see all three of them there. The largest one poking its head out underneath that rock on the left. Uh, it's actually the most intensely coloured comp as well, and it always hides. I'd love to show you 
Oh, it's that compressor steps there, but um, yeah, very, very shy fish. Uh, more shy than the two smaller ones that are always out in the, uh, in, somewhat in the open. So we'll see how this tank goes over the next few weeks with the Ventralis Tyotika in this aquarium now. Hopefully they'll act as good to the fish and make the gold comps feel a little bit more at ease and I'll be able to see the gold comps a little more frequently than I do at the moment uh, and make feeding them a little bit easier as well. Uh, basically when I feed them I need to move this lid and then shift the back lid forward and then feed them at the back of the aquarium so they get food right at the back of the tank there. But uh, hopefully with this move of putting more fish in the aquarium with them they'll feel a little bit more at ease and the gold comps will come out of those rocks uh, and into the open water a little bit more. Maybe I'd have to also add a few more rocks so they might take up residence in the front of the aquarium more so than the back. And anyway, that's what we've moved so far. Next move now is to move these guys out of here, my white Altel Prologus compressor sips. These are the second oldest generation of um, white Altel Prologus calvus that I've got, and uh, they're gonna go into this aquarium. And then that aquarium will be ready for the fry from these two. Once again, a lot of water on the floor. If you think you can have a fish room and uh, think that you're not gonna ever spill water on the floor, that is an absolute myth. This is water just from the dripping net, from moving fish from one tank to another. It is inevitable. So if you're ever planning on building a fish room, please don't do it on carpet <laughs> or floorboards. Uh, that wouldn't be uh, as bad as carpet, but won't be as good as hard floors like concrete uh, or very strong tiles. Anyway, let's see what we've done. There's absolutely no fish in this aquarium now. The water is a bit murky, and I'm going to actually do a gravel back on this crushed coral. This is uh, crushed coral uh, for reef aquariums. I'm going to be vacuuming that up. Most of my aquariums in the fish room have pool filter sand. Uh, this is just some leftover from my marine aquarium days, so I just use it um, in my calvus aquariums because uh, I try to keep the sand bed uh, extremely clean for the calvus fry because when they're newly born, uh, when they're newly free swimming so to speak, uh, they still sit on the on the sand bed for a number of months. One to two, maybe even three months uh, at a time. You can see these guys here, some of them still sit on the sand bed. These guys are about three months old. And uh, yeah, so you just really want to keep your sand beds very, very clean uh, when you're keeping calvus or Altalium pelogus compressor sips. I've said it countless times in videos to you guys and um, so yeah I'm going to definitely clean this out now uh, and give it a really good clean. Put some slate back in there, some caves and I'm also going to clean out their double headed sponge filter. So let's look at the other tanks. This is where the Lampelogus Oscillatus Gold were with the Ventralis Chitika. Now it has my uh, second, actually third generation of white uh, calvus. So these guys are a little bit skittish. Um, they'll get used to this aquarium in the next few hours. They've just been moved from uh, that tank all the way over to here. And then the guys that were in here are in here. The Leopologus Ocelatus Gold. So I merged them in with other fry. They're about the same size, so no problems there. And the Ventralis Chitika, still at the back of the aquarium. They've seen me moving from, from tank to tank with the net, um, climbing up and down the ladders in front of them. So they're still a bit skittish, but this tank is almost ready to go. Like I said, I'm just gonna do a gravel back on that, put the uh, double-headed sponge filter in, some rocks, and we're sweet, we're good to go. And then once the fry exit their parent's shell in the coming days, I'll be able to catch them out and just with my footstool, put them into that aquarium. Easy peasy. All the f moving of fish in the fish room has been done for the day. The other thing I thought I should mention is that out of all the calvus that I moved out of this aquarium, two were small enough to be put into this tank. And these guys, I'm sorry, I've forgotten how old they are. They're probably about four months, five months old here. And the other calvus are my third generation. Uh, so I'm up to my eighth spawn now and two from that third generation were small enough to go into this tank. 
So they calvus, they do grow at different rates. Uh, you could assume those two small ones that I placed in this tank are female, just because the males grow larger than the females. They put on size quicker, and that is why I've put two uh, smallest ones in this aquarium with these other fry, basically because they are the same size as these fry in here. Uh, and it's best that you split up the sizes because calvus fry, when they're large and they've got smaller brothers and sisters in with the tank with them, they will eat them. I've never seen that happen. It may have. I'm not saying it hasn't because of, just because I've never seen it happen doesn't mean it hasn't happened. Uh, but yeah, I try to keep all the sizes together regardless of generation just so uh, that cannibalism doesn't happen. Anyway, there you go. Now to clean this tank. Okay guys, I've wiped up all the water and tidied up the fish room again. And let's have a look at the tank that will have the newly hatched white calvus fry. Okay, so done a little gravel vac on this coral sand. Uh, it's such fine stuff, it's very hard not to suck it up in the siphon. Uh, but you don't need coral sand for calvus fry. You can easily use pool filter sand. It'll do the exact same thing except this stuff will buffer the water and make it hard. Uh, this is leftover uh, coral sand from when I used to be in saltwater aquariums and uh, I just used that instead of pull filter sand uh, in some of these aquariums. But I don't have much of the stuff, it's very expensive. Anyway, uh, you can get away with doing uh, pull filter sand. Now basically, I, I kind of do repeat myself in some of these videos when I'm talking about calvus and calvus fry and bring up the fry. Uh, but for any new guys who are coming across my channel and haven't seen any of my other videos, I'll just explain a couple of things to you. So you might notice that there's not a lot of light on these calvus fry tanks. And the reason is for that is I believe that uh, the aquarium light can shock the fish and I've been having a much better survival rate, much better success rate by leaving the lights off. The light from the uh, fish room, just those two uh, halogen lamps is more than enough for a day night cycle for these guys. I've had so much better success with the fry when I have the lights off on these aquariums. Uh, and also keeping that pool filter sand or coral sand really clean when you have newly hatched calvus fry. And that's because calvus fry like to sit on the bottom of the aquarium when they're newly hatched. When they're newly free swimming, so to speak, they will sit on the bottom of the tank and they can kept, catch infections if the bottom of the tank is not kept clean. So I said this a lot of times in my Calvus videos to you guys, but for anyone new to the channel, uh, go back, watch my other Calvus videos and you'll see, hopefully help you guys uh, have better spawning success with your Calvus. And that goes for Altalampologus compressor steps as well. Keep the bottom of the tank clean, keep the light off on the aquarium. And also when the Calvus fryer this young, I don't even have lids on the aquariums. They're not gonna jump out of those tanks. It's far too high for the fry to jump out. Uh, I believe the clinking of the glass lid, when you go to feed them, take the lid off, put the lid back on, you're clinking the glass, that can send a shock wave through the water column and uh, potentially kill your fry, stress them out. I have seen fry do that right before my eyes when they're this young, when they're this age, or when they're that size, basically two months old, clink the glass a little bit, I saw one basically spasm and die right in front of my eyes and that's when I realized I should not have the lids on these tanks when they're this size. When they get to about this size, you need the lids on the aquariums and these guys are far more hardier once they're this size. They will jump out of that space. So you do need the lids once they get to this size. But uh, when they're newly hatched fry, like these guys, like blackouts on Ampelogus calves fry, no lid on that aquarium. Other aquariums on either side of them have lids because they've got some larger fish in there. These guys do not need lids. The only reason why you'd have a lid on, if anything, on uh, these aquariums is to stop evaporation. But I just wear that, grin it and wear it because I'd rather have some evaporation out of the fish room rather than uh, killing my calvus fry. So another tip for you guys if you've never seen any of my videos before. No lids, no light and clean sand, a clean sand bed for them to sit on. Because the calvus fry, even though they're about two to three months old here, uh, they will sit for long periods of time on that sand bed. And if it's dirty, if there's mold or anything on it, they will pick up infections and die. And that's what happened to some of my 
uh, first earliest spawns. The other thing I'll point out that I don't have in these aquariums when fry are this young are uh, bristlenose catfish. Bristlenose catfish can um, stress these guys out when they're this young uh, because the bristlenose catfish sit on the bottom of the tank. These guys like to sit on the bottom of the tanks as well when they're young, as I said, and that can stress out the fry and you will start losing them as well. So you don't need bristlenose catfish in these tanks because there's no light on the aquarium. So no need to keep bristlenose catfish in with your calvus fry because you will not be having that light on. That's what I found works for me. You might, if you've got something else that works for you, please share it in the comments below. But uh, this is my eighth spawn with these guys now. And I've learned a lot over that time and pretty much having 100% success rate with their spawns. So you can see the female there putting her head in the shell. Let's see if we can see some of the fry down in the shell. I can see them with my eyes, but on this camera it might be a little bit hard. So in that hole here, there's one there. Right in that hole. You can see a darkish object right in that hole. That's one of their fry. So we might see it swim around. There you go, it's swimming around now. Yeah, it darted away when the mum went in there. So, uh, the fry are free swimming. I fed this aquarium yesterday. I'll feed it again today. Just some live microworms, uh, hoping that some of them will find their way into the shell and those fry will have a feed. Those fry are, can be considered free swimming at this stage. Also, I've done other videos on uh, whether you should remove the female with the shell and the fry into another tank or if you should just catch the fry out uh, with a net and move them to the aquarium. I've done previous videos about the pros and cons of both, uh, and I won't go into too much detail here, but basically with my white tail Lampologus calvus, this bond is so good I don't ruin it. I just, let, I just catch the fry out with a net and move them into the aquarium. My black outer Lampologus calvus, which I'm hiding at the moment, there's one at the back there. When they spawn, I remove the shell with the fry and the female into another tank. And the reason being is that, if you saw my other videos, the female black calvus is so aggressive with the other fish in this aquarium, there's no point in keep, uh, keeping in her, her in here and trying to catch the fry out. It's best to move her out uh, because she'll, she'll just want to fight the other fish so much that she almost kills herself. So she's been in here for about two weeks. Look how aggressive she is with me. She just protects that shell so much. Beautiful fish, but look at her flaring those gills up, trying to make herself appear as large as as possible. There's no fry in this tank. There's absolutely no fry in this tank. She's the only fish in this aquarium. But she's so protective of that shell, whenever she, whenever she sees her far out, this is a tongue twister, whenever she, <laughs> whenever she sees this shell, she associates it with fry, even if she doesn't have fry with them in there. So even if she doesn't have fry in the shell, she just sees the shell and she wants to defend that territory. So when I pop her back in with her other black calvus tank mates, which are in this aquarium, I will not be putting the shell in here until I'm ready to spawn them again. Anyway, it's a video all about why I do things a certain way with my calvus and other ways with the other calvus, and you can watch that video again. Uh, and I do suggest you watch it because there are pros and cons of both catching the fry out or moving the female with the fry. Anyway, guys, there you go. So there you have it guys, moving fish around the fish room to make way for another white Alto Lamprologus calvus spawn. I really can't believe it, but I'm pretty happy with the moves that I've made in the fish room to make way for that spawn. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and consider subscribing to my channel. I really would appreciate it. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.